What's up everybody? I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is our reviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. So make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Phoenix Resurrection number five. So written by Matthew Rosenberg with art by Laniel Francis Yu. This is the conclusion of the return of Jean Grey and it's interesting. Uh, it's definitely been something that's been building up to this culminating point and I can't wait to see well, I can't wait to talk about what happened with uh, with this book with you guys because there's some interesting tidbits that I kind of want to I kind of want to dive into. So let's take a look and see if this book lives up to the expectations or goes down in flames. After Phoenix Resurrection number four, I have really high expectations for number five. So when we jump into things, we see Old Man Logan just simply walking into the diner. There's no kind of conflict when it comes to this gigantic bird phoenix entity that's sitting on the top of the building. It's just all about two people connecting. So we're talking about Logan and Jean. And these are people that have known each other in past lives or in their own lives. And he just tries to kind of connect. You know, it's very subtle. It's very easy for him to kind of slide in here. He's seeing this person that he saw die in front of him and you know somebody that he really cared for and is slowly trying to figure out exactly who she is and what she is and she's immediately becoming uncomfortable like immediately becoming uncomfortable with this situation because it's unknown it's foreign it's one of those things that she can't control and the phoenix can't control it either so annie tries to step in before logan just slashes her across the throat it's just brutal and then you see the 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 bird leaving the the top of the diner they're kind of curious as to what's happening all of a sudden things are shaking around the the world and the the blood off her neck is just pouring onto the ground and then ultimately she rises back up to life. And, you know, she's like, Jean's like, oh my god, Annie, you just died. Told you so, to Red. Uh, you know, the coffee tastes like shit, by the way. And it's just very much Logan's just trying to reinvigorate her memories, bring her back to who she is, and asks her, is it all starting to come back now? Is it? You remember who you are? And she's furious and slowly understanding, and he's like, I gotta, I gotta have an answer, baby. You know, I gotta have an answer, sweetheart. And she's like, yeah, I remember. And the phoenix force blazes up in her eyes and the entire diner's destroyed and all this kind of shit just hits the fan. It's it's awesome. I loved it. And then you've got what's going on. Logan, uh, of course, deadpan and dry, burning, basically fuming with smoke. He's just like, yeah, she remembers. And the, the brilliance of this dark phoenix, this final phoenix form, comes to life as she walks out of the fire. And I mean, that is it's just a fantastic single-page big boomer of a... Of a uh, I mean... I yeah, cosplay is going to be a thing. This is going to happen and it's going to be fantastic. But that doesn't really, you know, give you the heart of the story. The heart of the story comes when the Phoenix bursts out of Jean. She's starting to confront it, you know, in the form of Annie, in the form of her parents that are deceased, in the form of all the other X-Men, everyone that she's loved, everyone that she's cared about, and how they're alive now. The Phoenix is tempting her with that kind of resurrection and Ultimately, she just blows them all away with this psychic blast, knowing that they're just facsimiles. They're, they cannot be replaced because they were never actually there. You know, they were resurrections. They were figments of a reality that doesn't want to come to pass. And the phoenix is confronting her directly, and she hits her at the soft spot, which is Scott. And this isn't some sort of figment of her imagination. She smokes him, and he's just like, oh, man, that really hurts. It's like, oh, she's she's real. So they have their reconnecting moment. It's a small redemption for Scott's character, you know, a small redemption for Cyclops as they kind of reconnect and embrace, you know, the love of her husband. She gets that back one more time until she says, we were better off dead, as he starts to fade away in her arms, collapsing on the ground. And she confronts the phoenix again. It's just like, hey, is that all you got? You know, she's staring down this cosmic entity as it slowly seems to wilt and shrink. You know, as she kind of goes over her emotional construct, what she really is is looking for, you know, what she wants to be as a person versus what the phoenix wants her to be as a person, it's one of those things where, man, you know, we're just not what we need to be. And the phoenix is like, don't you understand? You know, we can be gods. We can transcend existence or we can hide. We can be together. We can become the best version of you or we can just go back to the way things were before things ever happened. And Jean's like, you're, you're, you don't understand me. You know, these are, this is life. I need to be able to, to, to be on my own. And, but the Phoenix is like, you'll lose everything. You'll die. You'll lose everyone that you love. 
And she's like, but that's that's living, you know, to have those losses. That is life itself. That is the act of being alive. And that's something that I need to be. And then again, the Phoenix Force just slowly shrinking, shirking back into, you know, we don't even know, but it's slowly disappearing until it says one final goodbye to Jean Grey. And she, holding the the last flowing embers of the Phoenix Force in her hands, says goodbye back and slowly drops to the ground and the rain pours down on them. And Jean Grey is back in the Marvel Universe proper. So Phoenix Resurrection as an entirety, I think, is just a great experience. I think it's going to be a fantastic read and trade. Uh, the art styles, because they changed over every single issue, can be very different, but I really like the one that this is set up. Uh, you know, the, the particularly when we're talking about the, you know, Jean Grey character, it looks fantastic. The artwork inside the diner and some other places can feel a little bit wonky, but overall, I, I definitely give it a passing grade when it comes to the art. The storytelling is funny because it's got the very serious moments. It's really diving into the heart of Jean Grey, but at the same time, it has these kind of small moments of humor to really offset that and reset your calibration so that that way you can get back into the heavy stuff without feeling too weighted down. So overall, Phoenix Resurrection number five and Phoenix Resurrection as an entire event is definitely a recommendation from me. Shit, I said definitely. It is a recommendation from me, one that you want to go back to the comic book shop and pick up if you have the opportunity. There are some phenomenal variants too, so there's a lot of collectability that comes into this. So I'm going to be grabbing mine and make sure that you grab your but I want to know what you think in the comments too so hit me up down there so that that way we can have a conversation about what Phoenix Resurrection really means and what kind of execution it really had as far as a story uh, always if you like what you see hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to get more news reviews and commentary on comic books comic book movies comic book TV shows and games and anything and everything inside the world of comics